In this video, we'll see another application of the probabilistic method, showing that any graph with not too many edges has a big independent set. An independent set in a graph G with vertices V and edges E is a set S of the vertices, so that no two vertices in S are connected by an edge. For example, in this graph, here's an independent set. This happens to be the biggest independent set in this graph. However, in general, finding the size of the biggest independent set is NP-hard. Even if we can't efficiently find the size of the largest independent set, it turns out that using the probabilistic method, we can prove that for any graph with not too many edges, there must be a big independent set. More precisely, we have the following theorem. For any graph G with n vertices and m edges, so that m is bigger than n over 2, there's an independent set in G of size at least n squared divided by 4m. To understand what this is saying quantitatively, let's just quickly see a few examples. First example, if m is equal to n choose 2, that is, g is just the complete graph, then this theorem says that the largest independent set has size at least n squared divided by 4 times n choose 2, uh, which is about a half. So this statement is trivial, but that's good. We should not expect to have a large independent set in the complete graph. The largest independent set in the complete graph has size 1, a single vertex. Okay, so sanity check passed. How about if m is a little bit smaller than that? Let's say that m is equal to n choose 2 divided by 100. So in this case, only 1 over 100 fraction of the possible edges are actually edges in this graph. So this graph is kind of sparse. In this case, the theorem says that the largest independent set has size at least 50-ish. Cool, that's not trivial. Let's see one more example. So suppose that m is on the order of 100n. That means that on average, every vertex has constant degree. So let's call this really sparse. Then this theorem says that the largest independent set has size at least n squared divided by 4 times 100n is n divided by 400. Cool, that's even more non-trivial. This is saying that there's an independent set which is a constant fraction of the vertices. Okay, so now that we understand the theorem statement, let's prove it. We're going to use the probabilistic method to prove the statement. In a previous video, we saw an example of the probabilistic method for Ramsey numbers. In that example, the distribution was pretty straightforward, just choose a random coloring. To prove this theorem, we will look at a slightly more complicated distribution. To motivate this slightly complicated distribution, let us first consider a not very good way to find a big independent set. So here's the not very good way. For every edge in E, we'll remove one of the endpoints, doesn't matter which. Then at the end of the day, we'll return all the vertices that haven't been removed and call them an independent set. Let's see a quick example of this. So let's consider this graph. I'm just going to go through all of the edges and remove one of its endpoints. So let's say I start with this edge and say that for this edge, I'm going to remove this endpoint. I'll put an X through it. Now I'll look at this edge. Let's just say I choose to remove this endpoint. Let's say that this edge also happens to want to remove that endpoint. This edge also wants to remove that endpoint. This edge is going to remove this vertex. This edge is also going to remove that vertex. And let's say that this edge is going to remove this vertex. Now what we're left with is th these three vertices, which haven't yet gotten removed. And hey, it worked. This is an independent set. So here are some observations about this procedure. The first observation is that this will always return an independent set. That's because for every edge, we threw away at least one of its neighbors, so it can't have two neighbors that are both in the independent set. However, the second observation is that it's not always necessarily going to return a big independent set. That is, in this example, I sort of cleverly chose which way to remove vertices so that I ended up with a decent-sized independent set. I could have done it differently. For example, 
this edge could have killed this vertex, this edge could have killed this vertex, this edge could have killed this vertex, and so on. So that at the end of the day, there are no vertices left. In that case, this procedure would indeed return an independent set, but it would also return the empty set, which is not very interesting. We're going to use randomness to improve this procedure. The basic idea is that we'll first remove a bunch of edges from consideration using randomness, and then we're going to try the approach we just saw. More precisely, here's the algorithm. First, for every vertex v, we're going to remove v and all of the edges attached to it with probability 1 minus n over 2m. Once that's done, we're going to do the same procedure we had before. That is, we're going to go through all of the edges and remove one of their endpoints arbitrarily, returning what's left. So let's see an example of this. First, we're going to do this first step and go through all the vertices one by one, removing some of them at random. Let's say I first look at this vertex, I flip a coin biased with this probability, and let's just say, for example, that it comes up remove, so I'm going to remove this vertex. So let's just erase this vertex and all of the edges attached to it. There they go, they're gone. Now I'm going to go on to the next vertex. I'll flip a coin, and let's say that this vertex gets lucky, it gets saved. Move on to the next vertex, let's flip a coin, and let's say that this vertex gets deleted, along with all of the edges incident to it. Move on to the next vertex, let's say this one also gets deleted. Move on to the next vertex, say this one gets to stay, and the next vertex, again, say this one gets to stay. Okay, so now we've finished with step one. Now we move on to the step two, which is that for every remaining edge, we remove one of its endpoints. In this case, there's only one remaining edge. Let's just say that we happen to get rid of this endpoint. Now I'm left with two vertices, this one and this one. And these two vertices indeed form an independent set in the original graph. This procedure doesn't give us the largest independent set that has size three, but it did give us something non-trivial. So that's pretty cool. Now that we understand what this procedure is doing, let's analyze it. First, just like before, this is always going to return an independent set, so we just want to show that it returns a big independent set, at least with probability greater than zero. To do this, let's define a random variable x, which is the number of vertices that survive the first step. We can compute the expected value of x as n, that's the number of vertices, times n divided by 2m, that's the probability that a fixed vertex survives. So here I'm just using linearity of expectation. So this is also known as n squared divided by 2m. Next, let's define a random variable y, which is the number of edges that survive the first step. Again, we can compute the expected value of y. So by linearity of expectation, this is the sum over all edges, let's say uv, of the probability that both u and v survive in the first step. Well, this is equal to m, because there are m edges, times n divided by 2m squared, because this is the probability that two distinct vertices both survive. And this simplifies to n squared divided by 4m. Finally, I claim that the size of the independent set returned is at least x minus y. This is because each edge that survives the first step can kill at most one vertex in the second step. So again, using linearity of expectation, this means that the expected value of the size of the independent set returned is at least the expected value of x minus the expected value of y, which we just computed. This is n squared divided by 2m minus n squared divided by 4m. And this is equal to n squared divided by 4m. In particular, since the expected value of the size of an independent set returned is at least n squared divided by 4m, that means that there must exist an independent set that is that large. So this proves the theorem. That is, this shows that for any graph G with n vertices and m edges, there is an independent set in G of size at least n squared divided by 4m. 
In particular, as we saw before, if m is not too big, then this number, the lower bound on the size of the independent set, is going to be pretty large. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.